Hey guys, um, thank you for sitting down to watch this video. Probably had no choice, but um, thank you. So let's get started. Internal. Dimitri, senior year. I wandered the hallways with more pride than usual as Viva La Vida pierced my eardrums. I shouldn't listen to music so loud. Dimitri! Chris Martin was interrupted by a shove from behind. Dimitri, what are you, deaf? Sorry, Coldplay sounds a lot better than usual. I smiled. Aries was fit and beautiful. She was a sporty girl who would always like to look good. Her broad hips seemed to flow seemingly with her dark brown hair and soft light skin. She was beautiful. Earth to Dimitri. Uh, sorry Aries, I just... I stuttered and continued my slow walk towards first period. So, are you going to that big senior initiation get-together Friday? I had almost gotten lost in her hazel, hazel eyes as she spoke. Um, I'm not too sure about that whole thing. Some kids really lose it at those. Come on, she insisted. Even Cedric is coming. How Cedric had been my best friend since I could count by twos and tie my shoes. He was my terrible wingman through junior high and even my Camp Woodward buddy in the summer of grade 5. He was the absolute closest thing to a brother I had. Sure, I'll go. Heck, you gotta get your name out there somehow. Friday night. I had just got off the phone with Cedric. I was to pick him up, head around for Aries, and off to our inedible death and or rise. My old Corolla jerked as we rolled up to Aries' place. Cedric had gotten much taller over the summer. He stepped out of the car and opened the front door for Aries. Why, thank you, Sir Cedric, Aries said in her false English accent. I envied his polite behavior. The house was in a foresty area, a neighborhood which, a neighborhood where each house was of some distance from each other. Say, 50 meters? It was huge. Its red brick wall seemed to light up the early night. I could see the old vines growing on the side of the house. We parked on the curb close to the house. As we got closer, I looked up to see Greek letters on a banner painted high in a balcony. It was a frat house. Cedric's eyes lit up. How did they manage to get a hold of this? Mine's did too. Let's go, guys. Aries led the way to the already wide open door. I did not think we were late, but the party was well underway. Eric Hoffman, the shortest, shyest kid in grade 12 but he was the first person to see us. With a beer in his left and a foam finger in the other, <laughs> he was shy no more, as he was half naked in bright blue boxer brief titled, Come Get Some. Put on some clothes, Aries yelled with a chuckle. The party was alive, drinks were pouring in, and the faint smell of smoke and marijuana was no surprise to me. The music was loud, just how I liked it. 200, 200, 300 people, the whole 12th grade, was at this party. Ahead of us, the white staircase was littered with girls picking which guys they were interested in. To the left was the kitchen where a game of bloody knuckles was being played in dim light, and to the right was the DJ and his setup of big water speakers. The house was an open concept with each middle floor room connected. Music blasted through the house and people were dancing, jumping, and flying. Let's get shots! I couldn't hear myself talk. Aries and Cedric agreed as we worked our way to the drinks across from the confused girl's staircase. To a good year! Aries stopped me. How about us? She smiled at me and Cedric. The night started off well. I was dancing with a new chick who moved in from New York. Then, I was having a chat with my grade 10 Spanish teacher, who was finally caught for having a fake teaching degree last fall and is currently taking grade 12 classes. At the age of 27. How did you even get invited to this party, I questioned. I wasn't, just snuck in through the back and made some friends. I let a long hard laugh as I was in disbelief but could not stop laughing. <laughs> Four years later, my heart started pumping. I knew I shouldn't binge, but I had already started. Aries and Cedric and I had been separated the moment we took the shot earlier. That night, now, with the party at its peak, I looked around to reunite with my buddies. I couldn't find Aries nor Cedric. Perhaps they've been separated too. 
and they were also looking for each other. I wandered the tightly packed medium sized house all through the living room where an intense game of beer pong was about to be won. I stepped outside into the backyard. The backyard was surrounded by thin forest. The cold night breeze lifted the hairs on my skin. I could taste the liquor on my lips as my teeth sunk into my bottom lip. I stepped back. I thought to myself that I would find them later on that night, but for now, nature was calling. I could feel a pipe about to burst in my bladder. Wow, did I need to pee. I worked my way up the stairs, avoiding flying beverages and girls. Mariah, a middle school friend of mine, was pinned up against the wall by some stud. It felt bad to interrupt, but I didn't want to let go of a leak in my pants. Mariah! Yeah, hey, um, you've been up here for a while. Do you by any chance know where the washroom is? Yeah, it's down the hall. She paused to gap. To the left. I saw the two disappear into a room as I slipped around the corner. Ah, the washroom. Vivid memories of my first encounter with the opposite sex flew through my mind. Grade 11 was a good year. As I opened the door, I was surprised not to the girl I lost my purity to in a bathroom, nor to a clean mirror and toothpaste, but I had walked into someone else's vivid and present encounter with the opposite sex. C Cedric, I stuttered. Dimitri, oh my god! Aries was stunned, but had enough in her to get Cedric off of her and roll down her tight-fitting dress. I was in utter shock, my eyes half teary, my heart within seconds of leaving my chest. I didn't know what to say. I scanned the bathroom, only to see my best friends half naked and one that I've had feelings for towards you for years. I stormed the scene, bolting down the stairs, near, nearly missing the new French exchange student, Alicia, who looked much like Zoe Brooks from Zoe 101. Whatever. The back door, I thought. I made my way through the hall and passed the now concluded game of beer pong. It was then that I had turned to see Aries and Cedric following me. I needed some air. I ran out into the thin forest, running a mere 30 meters before reaching a break in the forest. This part of the forest wasn't really a forest. Tree stumps scattered the earth for the next hundred yards. A glowing object 20 or so feet away caught my attention. As I walked towards it, I could hear Cedric and Aries reach the break in the forest and call out my name. Dimitri, what is that? What are you doing? There was a lone tree. In the crevices of this lone tree, a glowing green substance leaked and dripped. By this point, Cedric and Aries had joined me. What is this? Cedric exclaimed. Not Aries' pants, I scowled. I reached towards the lime green flow with unsure precautions and a shaky hand. Aries drew my hand back. I looked into her, to her hazel eyes, lit by her mysterious light source. Dimitri, don't. I rebelled against her advice and reached again. Ah! At contact, I felt a surge of energy go through me. It was like I had been electrocuted. Aries and Cedric tried their hand at the gooey substance and had a similar result. Guys, come on, let's go. I really don't like it here, Aries said. As soon as she finished her sentence, wind picked up. The tree started to sway and the goo started to glow intensely. Ah, oh, my ears! Cedric shouted. My eardrums began to rumble as an extremely high-pitched screech surrounded us. And then, as fast as it all started, it ended. Is that... If I could finish Aerie's sentence, I would tell you that she wanted to say, is that it? Certainly not. Her sentence had been interrupted with a sudden pulse of wind, launching us all back onto the cold earth. As my eyes opened, I could barely make out a picture of the night sky. I struggled. Guys, wake up! Eerie's eyes open. How long have we been out here? Cedric said. I pulled out my phone. Whoa, it's fried! I looked at my watch. It read 1.30 a.m. We haven't been out here for long. As we head back to the house, not a word was spoken between either of us. The, cry the car ride home was similar. When I woke up in the morning, things were scattered everywhere. I couldn't think of anything that had happened. Four missed calls, two from Aries, two from Cedric. 
Their messages confirmed something weird was going on. And also, Aries assuring me that last night was a one-time thing with Cedric. We made plans to rendezvous at the docks. It was great outside. Typical morning in Santa Monica. Guys, something weird is happening, Aries started. Cedric and I looked at each other in agreement. This morning when I woke up, I went through this exact speech. I could see it. And when I was done, that guy in the water over there wiped out. I took a look over my shoulder and saw an ordinary surfer looking to catch a wave. As soon as he was on it, in no time he bit the dirt. Cedric was in awe. How did you know that? You see, that's the thing. I don't know. The conversation grew and I was lost. Simply daydreaming, my eyes were concentrating on Cedric's shirt. I didn't know what I was doing, but as he spoke, my eyes reverted to Aries. That was when a button on Cedric's shirt flew off and hit Aries. Holy sh... You can move things with your mind? <laughs> Telekinesis. That was it. That explained the mess in my room. So everyone's got a power but me. You just have to find it, Cedric. It will come to you. There was still tension from last night's walk-in incident. We walked on the path from the docks headed to the mall. Nice shoes. Cedric was teasing Aries. Shut up, C, she said. He nudged her and her quick temper acted. Cedric? Without thinking, I used my power. I launched Cedric forward, which unfortunately was also the end of the sidewalk and the beginning of the road. Then approached Ford's 2010 best-selling vehicle, the F-150. The truck collided with Cedric midair. Cedric! Aerie shouted. Cedric's back crunched and buckled onto the hood of the car and flew off when the driver stopped the car. Then within seconds, he drove off. Cedric, are you okay? He was quiet, and his limp, one strong heartbeat faded. Cedric was gone. Dimitri, what did you do? I stuttered. I, I don't know. His leg twitched. A sign. Suddenly, he sat up as if he was awaking from a sleep. That was crazy. I'm invincible. My power is Superman. He exclaimed. No, Cedric. You're immortal. How could this all have happened? What was that glowing stuff? So many questions were flowing through my mind as I curled up in my bed, thinking about my eventful day. I tucked myself in, literally, and went to sleep. A week had gone by. School was the same, but life was different. I no longer walked downstairs for a glass of milk. It came to me. Our friendship was different too, between Cedric and I. I know what we're doing this weekend, and don't wear that shirt tomorrow, Dimitri. I was still getting used to Aries' psychic ability. So, what are we doing? Cedric asked, zipping up his hoodie. Aries spoke with excitement. Kristen Stewart is having a party. It's just outside the city, and everything goes. And this time, I'm driving. I showed no hesitation. Let's do it. Cedric smiled. I'm in. I waited outside my house with hopes of a good night and with hopes of a rekindled friendship, and with hopes of my best friend back. I was picked up last. As Aries drove up, I sensed worry. Cedric was already at it again, and my temper was rising. This is going to be a long drive, I thought. Nice hair, Dimitri. Have you been hanging with One Direction lately? Knock it off, Cedric, Aries scowled. Hey, hey, I'm just trying to give the guy a few pointers here and there. My fingers were tingling, and my temper was rising. That's nice of you, see, but I don't take pointers from plugs. Cedric turned his head towards the back seat. What was that? I said, I don't take pointers from plugs. He toyed with Aerie's dark brown hair. Your crush here doesn't think I'm a plug. Cedric, shut it! My eyes sharpened on Cedric, and in a moment's notice, his body slammed onto the dashboard. Dimitri, no! Aries shouted a second too late as Cedric's body shattered the passenger window and spoiled our driver's Aries. The car made two sudden jerks and one that sent us 
head on into the guardrail, tipping us over as we grazed the tarmac upside down for 10 meters. We came to a slow, agonizing stop. I unbuckled my seatbelt and hit the ground. Crawling out of the car, I then saw Cedric. His once cocky face was now in shock. C C Cedric, I'm sorry. Are you alright? I'm fine, I'm fine. Let's get her out, he said calmly. We struggled to help our friend out of the flipped Mazda. She was badly hurt. Cedric and I had a few cuts and bruises, but there was a defining gash across her forehead. She needed medical help as soon as possible. Hey, Aerie, stay with me here, okay? I'm right here. Dimitri's right here. We're calling 911. Everything's gonna be cool. Her eyes started to close. We held her in our arms, her blood so thick and warm, flowing out so quickly. The night was young, and it had just begun, and the cold, air hit our blood-covered arms. Nothing. Cedric looked into my eyes and we were overcome with so many feelings. Feelings of guilt and sorrow and selfishness. We could not blame the powers. Tears broke out and unlike Cedric, when her heartbeat faded, it was gone for sure. Our eyes geared towards the road in search of where we were, just outside Santa Monica. Aries was gone. A sign ahead of us read, Eternal Drive. Cedric, let's not fight anymore. It's time to care. It's time to take responsibility. It's time to lead. It's time for a change. It's time to be true to our greatest self. It's time to stop blaming others. A quote from Steve Maraboli. In his book, An Apologetically to You, Reflections on Life and the Human Experience. Thank you. Internal, internal, internal.